Good day. This is Brother Medina for Tuesday, Seventh Day Adventist. And please let us start with a word of prayer. Gracious, loving Father, please be with us right now as we enter into your word. Bless us with understanding. Give us your spirit of truth. Help us to see these important things because these thoughts, being a part of our consciousness or a part of the knowledge stored in our minds, makes us live right and prepares us for the second coming. And so we thank you for hearing us and blessing us through the truths of Jesus Christ, the plan of salvation, right now. Amen. Well, we are continuing at our study about Yahweh, and we need to explain some very important points here about this study. We showed you last week that Jesus Christ was none other than Yahweh, Yahweh himself, in a temple of flesh. Yahweh himself in a human body. We also showed you that it wasn't impossible for Yahweh to dwell in a human body. It won't change his divinity. It won't rob him of his divinity. It won't make him less God than he really is. We showed all of this. So what we want to do is to continue and explain even more about him. We showed you the name Jesus is Yahweh Savior. And the same Yahweh who a savior identified in the first witness of the Old Testament, it is that very same Yahweh who exists today. And that same Yahweh was the original God from the very beginning. And that same Yahweh came in a temple of flesh. It was Yahweh, savior in a temple of flesh. And that's who Jesus was. That's why his name was called Jesus or Yahshua meaning Yahweh, Savior, and that he would save his people from their sins. So we showed you very carefully that the one whom was identified as Jesus was Yahshua, Yahweh, Savior, and that that same Yahweh, the original God, the only God, was on the earth in a temple of flesh, walking among men. So if you were to ask yourselves, who was Jesus? He was not just an ordinary man like any one of us. His flesh profits us nothing. His flesh profits nothing. But divinity dwelt in that flesh. So when you look at that man, or when you refer to that man, Christ Jesus, you are referring to a human being in whom Yahweh himself dwelt exclusively. Yes, my dear people. So if you were to look at these facts and understand these facts, you would understand that it is one invisible, divine, spirit, nature, love. That's how the Bible describes God. And that one God was in the temple of flesh, the Jesus had. Also, the Bible tells us that there are three persons, the person of the Father, the person of the Son, and the person of the Holy Spirit. The divine nature dwells in those three persons in an exclusive way. But when the divine nature dwells in those three persons, that one divine nature has the office of will, the office of mediator, the office of creative agency. And those three offices are divided up in the three persons. So that in the person of the Father, you have God dwelling there, exercising the office of will. That's why Jesus will say the will of the Father that sent me. And then you have the divine nature dwelling in the person of Jesus in a body form and exercising the office of mediator or explainer of truth or unfolder of truth. And then you have the divine nature dwelling in the third person in the form of creative agency. That's why the Bible says, Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created. Thou renewest the face of the earth. And so what we have here is one divine nature 
an invisible God that cannot be seen with the naked eye in a temple of human flesh, exercising the office of unfolder or mediator. That's what we had here. And this clearly shows us that Jesus is none other than authentic God himself. So when Muslims usually say, you Christians believe in Jesus to be God, have partners with God. No, Jesus is not a partner with God. Jesus is authentic God himself. The theological framework is one invisible divine spirit nature love, God dwelling in three persons, expressing those divine offices so that Jesus wasn't a partner with God. Jesus was God himself, authentic God himself in a body of flesh. So nobody makes partners with God. That's a wrong interpretation. That's a misrepresentation. If you want to identify something that is wrong, at least show how God cannot dwell in a temple of flesh. And if he's a great, mighty God, who could create a delicate thing like the eye, like the heart, like the liver, and like the whole human body in its sympathetic functionalism, working in a harmonic way, each organ working with the other, if he could do that, is it a difficult thing for him to come in human flesh and not sin? If God could create the sun, the moon, the stars, the universe, and all strange phenomena with all the creatures that we are now beginning to understand or now beginning to discover wherever they may be, is it impossible for him to find a technique to dwell in a human flesh? No, it is not impossible. He can indeed find a technique to dwell in human flesh. And when he dwells in human flesh, one might say, well, look, human flesh is sinful. You see, in the Bible, sinful flesh does not mean sin. Sinful flesh means flesh affected by sin. That's right. But it is because the human mind has been infected with sin that the body became affected by sin. But Jesus, while he wasn't infected with sin, had a human body that was affected by sin, like we all have. So human flesh is not sin. Before you sin, you must choose to do wrong. Having a human body is not a wrong choice. We were all born that way. So the important thing to understand here is that in this body, in human body, in our type of body, the divine nature dwelt. And it didn't make him less God. In fact, he showed us human beings how we should live. And he came for a particular purpose, to explain, to illustrate, to live the plan of salvation that would deliver us. And that's why it is important for us to understand who Jesus is. So let us look at some scriptures that continue to explain these things to us. Since Jesus was God himself in a temple of flesh, now you can understand why he said that if we were not to believe that he was the I am, we would die in our sins. Now you could understand why he said that. Because it is the I am that is identified as Yahweh in the Bible. And Yahweh is the only true God and Savior. Let us look at John chapter 8 and verse 24. Here is what we are told. I quote, Jesus speaking, I said therefore unto you, that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. End of quote. Now if you see the I am he, the H-E-he there, in your version of the Bible, always remember 
as you see the he, H E, as you see the H E in italics, you would always recognize that that is not in the original language. The original language has, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am, you shall die in your sins. End of quote. So what is Jesus saying here? If you do not believe that he is the I am, you will die in your sins. Now why would he say that? Because Jesus was the I am in a temple of flesh. So if you reject Jesus and say, no, 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 that's not the I am, that's not Yahweh in a temple of flesh, you will die in your sins. Because you would not accept the admonitions he would be given and the explanations and the truths he would be given as the plan of salvation. Because they all involve having a part of showing that he himself is God in a temple of flesh. And that's why those who deny that Jesus is God will die in their sins, no matter what religion you belong to. If you deny that Jesus is God in a temple of flesh, that he is the I am in a temple of flesh, you will die in your sins. Now let us just look at the I am again. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 12, to verse 15. I quote, Exodus chapter 3, from verse 12, here is what we are told. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And this is what God is telling Moses. This is what Yahweh is telling Moses. Verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I am come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am had sent me unto you. Did you see that? But let's go on. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, had sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial <coughs> unto all generations. End of quote. Did you see that? So what are we being told here? We are being told the one who is Yahweh, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, that particular one is identified as I am that I am. And he calls himself I am. So the word Yahweh means the self-existed one, the I am. And here Jesus clearly told the Jews, if you do not believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. That's why he would say that. Because he knew who he was. He knew that he was the I am in a temple of human flesh. And that's why he told them in that delicate structure of the plan of salvation. The I am being in a temple of flesh is very important. That is important for salvation. You see, whoever would be our savior must be God because Yahweh is the only savior. So if Jesus is identified as the savior, he has to be Yahweh. He has to be the I am in a temple of flesh. If you don't believe in his true identity, you won't be able to follow his plan. The plan of salvation. If you do not accept his true identity, you won't benefit from the plan of salvation. And this is the reason why it is important to understand who Jesus is. So, Yahweh, that same original Yahweh, came in a temple of human flesh. 
And that same Yahweh was in the temple of flesh that we call Jesus Christ or Yahshua the Messiah in Hebrew. But again, we need to understand that Jesus therefore is not another God with God. Some religion teach that Jesus was a God, a lesser form of God, a lesser form of deity with Yahweh, or as they say with Jehovah. But Jesus cannot be a God with God. You don't have a lesser form of God. A lesser form of God is a false God. God is one. And if Jesus is not God, then he's not a lesser form of God. And if he's not God, then he's a charlatan. And nobody should listen to him. And nobody can be saved. And the whole plan of salvation is false. He has to be the true God, the authentic God, Yahweh himself. This is the reason why the Bible clearly explains to us how divinity dwelt in Jesus Christ. And this is the reason why the Bible clearly tells us, if we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we will read verse 19, here is what we are told, I quote, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Did we see that? So we are being told God, the divine nature, was in Christ. And he was reconciling the world unto himself. And he committed unto us or gave unto us the word of reconciliation. That was his function. So if one asks, how do you know, or how is it that the divine nature dwells in three persons? And how could that be? Jesus came to teach that. He came to give an example of it. He is the pattern. That's why he said that we should look at what he did and how he lived. That's why he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. That's why he was pointing out himself. Because he was the pattern. And that's the reason why he said also that... If you do not believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. Because he knew who he was. God was in Christ. That's why we are told that in the Bible. So Jesus is not another God with God. He is the bonified Yahweh, God himself, in a temple of flesh. And that's the reason why in the epistle of John, the first epistle of John, he would tell us, a strange statement like this. If we look at 1 John chapter 5 and we read verse 20 and 21, here is what we are told. I quote, And we know that the Son of God is come and had given unto us an understanding. Did you get that? He came and he gave unto us an understanding which clearly shows the role of God in the person of Christ. It goes on. That we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. End of quote. Did you see that? And this is the reason why we are being told that. This is the true God and eternal life. And verse 21 tells us, Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Why would he say that? Because everything else has idols. Because the only true God, the one invisible, divine, spirit, nature, love, was in the body of Christ. And this was the true God. All the rest are idols. That's the importance of Jesus in the role of salvation and in history. Because he was authentic God himself in a temple of flesh. Yes, my dear people. And this must be recognized. This must be understood. So you ask yourself, who is this Jesus? 
he was none other than the authentic Yahweh himself, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the I am in a temple of flesh. But his flesh was not meant to detract a person because he says the flesh profited nothing. The point about it is the divine nature was in that temple of flesh. And that was Yahweh himself. So we are not looking at another God, a new God, when we look at Jesus or a partner with God. We are looking at the authentic God himself. And these are the things that people need to understand. But we must also remember another important fact or learn another important fact. And that is the function that Jesus did upon the face of this earth. Yes, my dear people, we need to understand this important thing. And that is that the body that Jesus had before he incarnated on the earth, the body that he had before in heaven, where he was called the Word of God, where he was called Michael, and Michael the archangel is not an angel. The word arch means commander. So Michael the archangel is Michael the commander of angels. And the name of Michael means who is what God is. So Jesus before was called the word of God, he was called Michael, the commander of the angels. And so, that same body ceased to exist. That same body ceased to exist. And when that body ceased to exist, a new body came in its place, a body from Mary, all done by God. And that new body was the body of Christ Jesus. So the body that he had before ceased to exist. He has a new body now. And that new body is the body of Christ Jesus. So the body that the second person had before the incarnation, that body ceased to exist. We are not told how or the way with all of it. We are just told that a new body, one born in the womb of Mary, was now the carrier of the divine nature. And now the divine nature dwelt in that temple of flesh. Yahweh himself dwelt in that temple of flesh. So Jesus is God with us forever. Forever he would have this flesh. His human flesh is now resurrected, glorified flesh like we would have when we are resurrected. And that belongs to him now forever. But the body form he had before ceased to exist. He was called the Word of God. He was called Michael. But that ceased to exist at a certain point in time. And the stipulated name, Michael, identified that he was who God is, that he was who is what God is. And also we know very carefully that we are to trust him because he is Yahweh in a temple of flesh. Yes, my dear people. These are important things that need to be understood. But what we are telling you here are all ratified in scripture. There are so many scriptures that explain these things to us. And there are many more things we have to touch again. We still need another study on about Yahweh to explain who he is and how he came and what he does for us. Yes, my dear people. And this is the reason why we are telling you the name Jesus or Yahshua is Yahweh, Savior, the Messiah, the Anointed One. The Anointed One points to the particular human being that was anointed of God for a particular purpose. 
But that particular human being that was anointed of God for a particular purpose, in him, Yahweh, Savior, dwelt. And that's why he was called Yahweh, Savior. Yes, my dear people. The body form he had before the incarnation ceased to exist. Now, the body that he has is a carrier of the divine nature. And that body is the body that we know as Jesus the Messiah, or Yahshua the Messiah, or Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear people, remember these important things. So until then, keep these truths in your mind, think about them, reason them out, study them carefully, and see the truthfulness of them. We will continue this study, and may God bless you until we meet again. Call us at this number, 6250446. 6250446, we would give you this study. And the others that came before, we will put them all on one CD when we have finished the series and send it free of charge to you. So, God be with thee until we meet again. In Jesus' name.